Good evening, Canterbury. I'm Mike Yardley. Welcome to the weekly debate on Newsmakers. It's a pleasure to introduce this week's all-star cast, the editor of The Press, Andrew Holden, entertainer extraordinaire and events manager Mark Hadlow, and Duncan Cottrell partner, MC and cricket commentator, and many other talents this man has. Yes, it's Garth Galloway. Thank you very much for joining us. There is nothing like the whiff of scandal to galvanise the press pack and Her Majesty's loyal opposition. National has incurred its first casualty with the sudden demise of Richard Worth. It would appear he brought new meaning to his role as Minister of Internal Affairs. But just what triggered the police investigation remains murky, and do we have a right to know the dirt? Mr Hadlow. Well, I guess, speaking from a personal perspective, I don't really care what people get up to in private. But once you do the little text thing, and you do it to people that you don't know, well, not a particularly, um, you know, amicable with, it's the public domain. I mean, you know, information technology is here. Use it your peril. So I guess being hoisted by your own petard is the, uh, is the best way one could describe this. I mean, how dumb. I mean, how dumb. That's it. Obviously there are these two instances that have captured media attention. We've got the Indian woman's complaint and now the Korean woman's complaint which has led to this Who police swam? investigation. Who swam? Who was the swimmer? Uh, that Indian. was concerning uh, the Indian woman. Good, okay, yes. good, good. Do you think the public have a right to know the specific reason why Key was convinced it was time to cut this guy loose? Uh, absolutely. I mean, I think the <clears throat> where he's going down is because he's involved his ministerial role in... The naughty play. I mean, well, especially I'm, I'm internal like, affairs. Yeah, that's, yeah exactly. I mean, I, and, I, and I think that's where, you know, it, it, presumably Key's got enough evidence to be convinced of that. Um, and he stepped completely over the line because most of the time you do say that if it's entirely private, you know, it's, it's not a matter for government, it's not a matter for the Prime Minister. I suspect, though, at the end of the day, he's absolutely delighted. I, he probably had to do worth put him in the ministerial cabinet because it was, uh, you know, old deals in the National Party. Very swiftly, he's got rid of arguably the weakest link in that cabinet and he can bring somebody better in. How do you see it, Gar? I agree entirely. I think, mm. if, is it bad news for National? I don't think it is. I think Key will early, come out it? of it being shown as being strong in terms of his leadership. It's, uh, it, it's early in their term. I don't see it damaging them at all. I think that the danger with texting is the same with emails. People forget. For some reason, they are prepared to put uh, in, in, in a written form things that they would never write in a letter in the old days before technology. And Correct. people lose their brain and, uh, and forget, and that's what it looks like has happened here. Do you think a troubled member of Parliament who is still on the public teat um, should engage a PR company to be their mouthpiece? Um, well, I mean, I, I think politics have become so uh, international and so famous now that one can understand why they do. So that, that, that the upkeep and the maintenance of that person is at, is at a level that, that they can comment on. So if they're doing something that's bad, they can change it. Um, but I think actually public money being used for it? Definitely not. Definitely not. Yeah, I, I don't have any objection to it so long as they're paying for it themselves. Yeah. I think Richard Worth needs a PR company, frankly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you know anyone? I don't know. <laughs> it's interesting how Labor have laid into John Key's handling over this whole matter, both instances really, um, the Indian complainant and the Korean. Was Key too slow in acting decisively, Andrew? He had the difficulty of natural justice, didn't he? That he didn't have enough evidence to nail Worth early enough. Mm. Credit to Goff, though. He's pushed hard on it. He's, he's sniffed blood in the water and he's moved fast on it. We're, I don't think he's got a slam dunk because by the sounds of it, he didn't stack up the information and have it ready to present and say, you've got absolutely no choice, you have to move on this. So um, in that respect, I don't, I don't know that Key had a lot of options. What Goff is saying, which I think is a bit unusual, Andrew, is that he, that Key should have asked him for the emails, for copies of them and those things, which I think is... Uh, I mean, Goff could have just as easily uh, offered them. I tend to think that Goff has run his course on it and he's not, he should back off now. He's, he's, yep. he's done well, he's gone in hard, but there's nothing else in it for yep. him, I don't think. Yep. I mean, I, I still think there's a, a part of that, and I'm prepared to cut politicians, I guess, guess a little bit of slack, is that there's still a, 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 that communication between our, polit our, our politicians mm -hmm. from either side or whatever side they represent in, in regards trying to maintain um, a, a good presence in Parliament. I mean, it's yes. hard enough at the best of times, isn't mm. it, with the, some of the things that happen. But, I, I, you know, that's great that at least Labor are talking to National Absolutely. from that perspective. Yep. So good on them, I say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Obviously, if there's any illegality at play here, that will um, 
come to light in time. However, when it comes to the high ethical standards that John Key has demanded from his ministers, it is interesting that in comparison to Helen Clark's management style, she expunged many ministers, but after a period of penance, you know, they found the road back to the inner sanctum. In the case of Richard Worth, John Key has made it absolutely clear that Dr Worth will never be one of his ministers again. What do we take from that, Andrew? I think he's sending a message to Worth supporters that don't ever try. You know, that I, I didn't particularly want this guy in the first place and you're not bringing him back. <clears throat> Very clear message there. The tough thing for him is going to be, though, when he's got a problem with one of his support parties. A little bit like Clark had with Winston Peters when mm -hmm. he ran into all that trouble last year. Easy to get rid of one of your own. You can control that within your party, but when it's somebody you rely upon, you know, the yeah. vote on the floor, then your ethics get a little bit murky. Yeah. And, of course, that doesn't exist, does it? Because National's got um, a clear majority at the moment, so... Yeah, but, I mean, I, I still think that there's enough of the parties, be it ACT or anybody else, I'm not saying that there's going to be anything smelly come out of those parties, but when something blows up with them, it's going to be harder for him to manage that. And I suppose you could argue the more support parties you have, the more <coughs> potential for trouble. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, since you are a legal eagle... Uh, Mr Galloway, can I ask you, in 2020 hindsight, do you think perhaps... Well, Andrew Simons is gone, you see. Well, there was that. <laughs> yes, yeah. we'll, get anyway, to, sorry, we'll get to sorry, sport sorry, later. <laughs> um, given that you know, Richard Worth was a high flyer with Simpson Grayson, uh, what always struck me as interesting is how he would sometimes virtually boast and bemoan having to take a drop in pay mm. to be an MP. Um, do you think he was actually, from the outset, ill-suited to Parliament? Uh, completely. And I, I think that he is a person, he's been in Parliament, he's been a lone wolf, is the impression that you get reading around. He hasn't taken counsel from senior politicians, he hasn't been prepared to, I don't think he's been prepared to listen. Uh, I think he would have been much better, probably with 2020 hindsight, being on his substantial Simpson Grierson drawing, as opposed to his rather comparatively paltry uh, parliamentary wage. But uh, <laughs> that's with the benefit of hindsight. Yeah, I, it always um, surprises me why someone like Richard Worth would want to get into politics. Um, obviously, I suppose they've found it stimulating and things, and there's a, clearly an ego element that goes with it. But um, I'm not sure that he'll look back on the last nine years with a great deal of satisfaction. And, and it's, it's, it's very sad what has happened as well. And, and let's not overlook that. He's behaved poorly. Uh, he'll never recover from this, I suspect. All right. I, I, I guess too, just to, to, sorry to interrupt, but um, it's, it's the world witch hunt at the moment, isn't it? Mm. I mean, from the perspective of what's happened in England, what's happening in Australia with the Defence yeah. Minister this morning. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I guess, you know, this is not a good time for anyone to be doing something mm. that's not norm uh, anywhere in politics. Sure. So. All right, we'll take a break. Coming up, uh, suspending the super fund and educating boys. Do stay with us.